And it's day two of the 48th annual conference of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. TVC News business correspondent Tolu Gunjobi is live at the event. Hello, Tolu. Uh, so the issue of tax justice in Nigeria uh, was given priority at the conference. What's been the take home? Well, indeed, Kemi, it's great to join you again today, day two of this conference live from the International Conference Center here in Abuja. Yes, like you said, tax and uh, tax just, justice expanding the frontier of public finance. And uh, the rightful people were actually here to do justice to this topic, starting with the chief executive officer, the chairman of FRS, uh, that's about today, Fowler. And we also had uh, the likes of uh, Mr. Taiwo Yedele of PWC and others, uh, managing director from um, uh, that's a Pan African Federation of Accountants was also here to discuss this topic, and a lot was brought out talking about our tax policy, talking about how we can improve uh, revenue, you know, through taxation at this time when government is looking at promoting the non oil sector. But I have with me here uh, today one of the uh, discussants that's Taiwo Oyedele, who is a lead partner, uh, partner with uh, Taiwo of Tax and co Corporate Advisory Services with Pricewaterhouse Coppers. Mr. Tao Edele, thank you for joining us on Business Nigeria, live here from Abuja. Well, let's start this way, talking about our tax justice. A, a lot was said today. Are we, really, are, we really, are we paying the right taxes, and are we getting what we are supposed to get in return? Yeah, I've said yes and no. So some of us are paying the right amount of taxes. I'm one of them. Oh, I think I'm one of them, too. <laughs> I believe you, actually. And then, but they have vast majority of people who are either not paying or they're not paying the right amount of taxes. You know, based on some of the statistics that the FRS even provided today, almost 6,000 companies with more than 1 billion naira turnover either haven't registered for tax at all or they registered but they haven't paid anything in the past few years. Now, are we getting what we should be getting from government? I also say yes and no. I do know that the revenue of government is small. You know, the whole of this country annual budget is under $50 billion. That's what a small state in the U.S. we spend on just uh, maybe primary education. So the money itself is small. But even that small money we collect, there's a lot of corruption and inefficiency. Sometimes even when governments spend money for the people, it's wrong priority. Like you're building an airport in a state where it's only the governor and the friend that are flying. The rest of the people, you know, they're worried about high bond water, about primary education, health care. So it's a combination of so many factors. Task justice in itself implies that both the people and the government must play their role so that we have fairness in the system. Yeah. And one of the points I made was, you need to ensure there's equity. Yeah. Equity itself is not treating all taxpayers equally. It is treating equal taxpayers equally under similar circumstances. Mm -hmm. So if we ask a small business, somebody has, the, the guy is the managing director, is the driver, he's the servant, and then he has to get to be filing VAT returns on a monthly basis. That's someone struggling to survive. It doesn't make sense. In many countries, you have a threshold. If your revenue per annum is below that level, don't worry about tax because it's unnecessary. The same thing for income tax. Somebody is earning 20,000 naira per month. You say they should go and pay PAYE. From which money? So tax justice requires that we look at these issues holistically uh, for the benefit of this country. I, I, I spoke to him about the fallout on his way out, and I looked at the projection from 6% to 20% in 18 months tax to GDP ratio. That looks like a, a tall order. Yeah, let me be honest with you. That's not going to happen. It, it, if, <laughs> you you if, believe it's not going to yeah, happen? it's not going to happen. That's going to be the miracle of the century if it happens. Currently, FRS is around 4 trillion naira revenue. But it's not only FRS. So you have to think about customs. They're around 1 trillion. You have to think about all the states across the Federation. Last year, they collected under 1 trillion naira. So if you put all of these agencies together, what he just said is that they will collect three times what they are collecting now within 18 months. It will never happen. Plus, we are at a point where the economic growth is very fragile. Tax does not happen by miracle, right? Tax is because people are doing businesses and they're doing well. So that won't happen in 18 months. So you need economic recovery to be significant and robust. When you get to like maybe 10% GDP growth, that is inclusive not the growth that is leaving the poor people and the masses behind. Exactly. Once you lift people up, unemployment and underemployment is over 40%. Once you bring that down to 5 or 6%, 
I can tell you PAY will go up. VAT will go up because people have money to consume. Companies will make more money from selling goods and services. They'll pay uh, company income tax. So these things are interconnected, and there's no miracle that is going to make it happen in 18 months for a 6 percent to GDP ratio to get to 20. To get to 20. I don't think so. Well, well Mr. Taiwo, I'm looking at this angle to talking of technology, which was raised here too, because FRS boss was talking about how they're using that to enhance uh, collection of tax that's bringing more people into the tax net. How far have we also gone uh, with taking advantage of technology? Yeah. Technology, is, it's always good to look at technology as an enabler. So technology will not solve a problem for you that you haven't figured out how to solve. Mm. It will only make it easier for you. You know, instead of spending 10 hours, technology will make me spend maybe 30 minutes. Mm. So what FRS is doing with technology is commendable. But they are focusing too much on the effort. We have put this in place, we have put that in place. I want them to start thinking about the impact and the outcome. So because we have put this in place, it is now easier for taxpayer to file. One million of our taxpayers now filed online, spending 30 minutes instead of 30 days. We need those kind of data because that's what will give us the comfort that indeed we are achieving our results and we can keep improving on those standards every single time so that we get to a point where it's similar. It's painful to pay tax. To then go through a very complicated process doing so, it's a contradiction to me. <laughs> now, I heard clearly there too that paying tax who also make us prosper as a nation. Uh, how do we also hold government accountable? At times, we look talking about all of this money is coming in. Uh, many are saying that even the timing for tax audit seems to be too long. So how do we check all of this? I'm talking about laws, mm. which you actually alluded to, and many people applauded you for talking about that. How far have we gone? We've heard of some laws being checked, uh, you know, but as we speak, how do we how do we go ahead with this? Yeah. The stamps, the old mm. old processes. Yes, yes. We have a lot of laws that are out of date. And and those laws are things that if you we have smart people in Nigeria, whether you're talking about lawyers, accountants, or whatever it is, that if you put them in a room and give them two weeks, they'll come up with a brand new stamp duty art that will be one of the best in the world. Plus, there are even templates around the world, from the OECD to United Nations, that say these are the things, because we're not, we're not the only ones to do it. Yes. Different countries have gone through these processes. So our laws are overdue for a revamp. We need to rewrite them. It's taking National Assembly too long. They don't seem like they are committed to the process, which is very unfortunate. But also to answer your question about how do we hold government to account. One important thing is it is not enough for you to have the legal powers to chase people to pay tax. You must have the moral rights. The presidency has not been remitting PAYE for their staff. National Assembly has not been remitting PAYE for their staff. I'm not sure the lawmakers themselves are paying the right amount of taxes on their income. It is wrong. Nobody should be above the law. The law is made for everyone. We should all comply. And Nigerians who pay their taxes must come up and speak out. It's good what you're doing on TV. It's good what some of us are doing, what ICANN is doing. Let's keep talking about these issues. When you bring it to the front burner, those issues will be addressed. Because I do think there are people in government who want to do the right thing. But they inherited wrong things, but they haven't made the effort to correct them. Ultimately, Nigeria would only develop when we can fix all this system, including tax. Most developed countries in the world don't rely on money from crude oil. They rely on the economy working and people paying taxes to run government. Oh, as we round up this segment of this e e interview, the national tax policy is something I'd like us to touch on before we round up this, e this, this interview. I know there was a review, and I keep asking you because I know you're a member of that, uh, <laughs> member of that committee. Yeah. Tell us what's, what's happening. What should Nigerians expect as we move ahead? And you also talked about leaders as we move into the political season. Yes, mm. I'm able to remember that. We yeah. should hold people... Wanting political posts, being a senator, being a governor, what do you have to offer us when it has to do with taxation? What are we looking at? Why, shed more light on that, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the national tax policy, you know, I don't know whether because um, I'm involved, but I would say it's a fantastic document that was produced last year and approved by FEC. But actually, policy is not what you say you do. Policy is what you do in reality. So in terms of what we have done in reality, we haven't made so much progress. We have a fantastic document, and we need to implement that like yesterday. So having said that, people who lead us and policymakers themselves must be willing to follow those principles that have been laid out in the national task policy. 
And if anybody wants to contest, it's very clearly stated in national tax policy, you must have paid your taxes at the appropriate time. It's even in our constitution. But what many of them do, because they are not honest people who have paid taxes at the right time, when they want to contest to be senator and whatever it is, you go and quickly pay 50,000 naira and collect a document. And somebody clears you. We have to stop that. We are in pre-election season. Nigerians must say whoever must preside over taxpayer money must themselves earn the moral right to preside over taxpayer money by paying the right amount of tax and paying it on time. INEC has a role to play. Presidency have a role to play. Um, political parties have roles to play. And more importantly, the office of the citizens, the largest office in Nigeria, the most powerful, have a very fundamental role to play. Thank you very much, Mr. Tawi Daly. Let's leave it at that. It's really My great pleasure. to have you join Thank us here in Abuja. Well, Kemi, that's it from here at this time. But we'll go on this break. Uh, we'll hand over to you. And when we come back, we'll be looking at the accountability index. It's also something that was launched and discussed here today, talking about accountability and how we can also hold government more accountable to, to Nigerians. It's back to you uh, in Lagos, Kemi. So, Lokwa Gunjobi, they're reporting live from the ongoing ICANN conference uh, in Abuja. Thanks. Well, we will continue with our coverage of the ongoing ICANN conference in Nigeria's capital, Abuja. Tululokbo Gunjobi uh, is uh, back with us now, uh, this time to tell us about how uh, accountants now have been told they need to play their part in ending the spate of corruption in the country. Tululokbo, over to you. Indeed, Kemi, thank you so much. Back again to Abuja. Well, we're looking at the accountability index. It's a document uh, that was just, has to, has to look at corruption, how governments, both states, federal and local, can be held accountable. But let me just uh, let the man that will be able to give us more insight into this take charge. Uh, I have Mr. David Brown here as a member of the committee that put up this very beautiful and important document. It's great to have you join us on Business Nigeria. Tell us what we need to know about the Accountability Index, the document. Well, the fact remains that um, it's an evidence-based approach, really, to understand and for the public to know whether or not um, all the public, public information is made available. So, I mean, for example, the legislature is supposed to scrutinize an audit. So are they scrutinizing the audits? It's one of the things that you, you need to check. So we as accountants, we're using an evidence-based approach which was developed based on the PEFA framework. It's a PEFA framework, it's a very popular global framework. And through the DFID and IFAC, IFAC which is our global yeah. body, we uh, came up with this uh, accountability index, which has five major pillars, and it has about 23 indicators and 64 dimensions. Now, what do I mean by that? So the key pillars, you have budgeting, as I just talked about, legislative scrutiny is one of the pillars. And what we're looking at is an evidence-based approach for public information, the certain things that should be available to the public. How is my state doing? How, how have they actually taken care of public finance management, which is the main thing, public finance management. And we are just recording and showing the public, okay, this is the record of how this state did, how did the federal do in all these things that are there in the law, really. We're just, we're just measuring it and giving it out to the public. So you can go and check and see whether or not uh, these things were done. So uh, for a layman on the street now, you will now ask me, how would this benefit me? What are the advantages? So the advantages are, for example, you, if you, for example, need to scrutinize an audit, if it's scrutinized, uh, scrutinize your budget and scrutinize it, but you know that they've done it, mm -hmm. then obviously, I mean, there's more, how do I call it, more accountability to the public. The public knows that, okay, these things have been done. Because our laws are excellent. We have excellent laws in Nigeria. Are they being followed when it comes to accountability and public finance management? So that's really the crux of it. So it's an evidence-based approach. It's not an audit. We're not auditing anyone. It's just mainly saying that these things that are written down in the law, when it relates to public finance management, are they being done? So the, the layman in the streets can see that, like a report card, for example. You look at your report card and your, your, your son got an F9 here and an A1 here. It's very clear that, oh, he's doing very well here. He's not doing very well there. So that's what that uh, index, that's what it does. So you, you go there and see the report card of your state. And then and you, you know, can challenge your state you and fairing? say, why haven't you provided the information? One big aspect we had was information. It, we didn't get enough information. There are certain key informations that we're supposed to get. And the ratios, the percentages of information that we didn't get, let's assume we needed 100 things. A lot of times we got only 40, 30, 20. 
Now, what about the remaining 80? It, it's supposed to be publicly available. What happened there? So what will happen is, gradually, this is the maiden edition, we're going to get better. So next year, for example, more information will be brought. And when you're more accountable, then people can hold you to certain things you're supposed to do. So it's, it will help in the, in the fight for or, or trying to make our country better. But again, that's, that's what we accountants, and just as the president launched it, that, that's what we... F f finally, finally, uh, as we end up this, uh, the role of accountants in economic development and in fighting corruption and making everywhere accountable, everybody accountable, we can't, it can't be overemphasized. Tell us, what do we expect from accountants as we move ahead, talking about reshaping our economy? Because most funding, transactions are all carried out by accountants. Yes, I agree. And accountants are the record keepers, right? I, I, I always like to say that when you start a new business, the first person you employ is an accountant. And in fact, if unfortunately your business has to wrap up, the last person that leaves is an accountant. accountant. So we need to keep records. Now, the accountant's role will obviously be enhanced when you know that, look, if we don't keep these records, as in the public will know that we don't keep these records, and it can affect us going forward. I mean, it, it, it's something that we're not manufacturing. These things are out there. And it's just a matter of ranking and then giving the information out. Thank you very much, Mr. David Brown. It's really nice talking to you on this show. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Well, that's all we have for you from here live from Abuja. Uh, it's back to you, Kemi. Thank you very much.